In the most recent episode of The Amazing Digital Circus, Kane explodes an NPC right in front of Pomni, scarring her for the rest of her digital life with how careless and callous Kane is with the entities he created that tend to think of him as a god. When doing this, Kane says that it would be very bad if he mistook an NPC for a human or vice versa, with a dark look on his face that indicates that this either has happened in the past or could happen in the future of the show. We're going to break down every possibility about what this means and how it could play out. Whether he killed a human before thinking that they were an NPC, letting an NPC take over the game thinking they are a human, or perhaps one of these supposed humans is actually an NPC themselves. My name is Deep Cut. I don't have a digital circus Sona yet like my imp Sona or my drone Sona, but if you guys have any ideas on what kind of digital circus toy I should try to be by episode 3, let me know in the comments down below. Now, the most dramatic possibility with Kane's dark moment is that he, at one point, allowed NPCs to live with humans and eventually began to mix them up. He notes that the humans love their NPCs, which doesn't actually seem to be the case, indicating that there was perhaps a time in the past where they were allowed in the main circus area for extended periods of time, back before the game began to feel more like a prison and when the NPCs were probably a bit refreshing. With six or perhaps even more humans being in the game at the same time, and those humans popping in randomly like Pomni did, it's easy to see why Kane might get confused on who is a human and who is an NPC. Humans were probably bringing in all sorts of NPCs at first, treating them like pets or even as friends when they were almost as sophisticated as Gummy Goo was, being able to talk to them on a more serious level. With dozens of characters running around in the main circus area perhaps, Kane would likely have to get rid of NPCs here and there, who were beginning to become less popular in the space as more new side characters would be added from their various quests. Simple NPCs who seem like fun pets to have likely got boring to the humans at the circus over time, who seemed to want more and more sophisticated NPCs to interact with that had more options of what you could do with them. Kane would have to delete these NPCs after a while and probably had no problem with a continuous cycle of letting fun NPCs stick around for a bit before eventually deleting them. But if he had let enough NPCs run around the circus for a time, he might have been confused on who was who. The NPCs aren't just friends with the humans, but would be friends with each other as well. And things could end up like that Rick and Morty episode where the alien parasites take on the form of wacky imaginary friend type characters, with the family not being able to tell who is an imaginary alien parasite and who is their real family. While deleting some of the characters, Kane might not have realized that one of these NPCs wasn't actually a non-playable character he had created, but a human who was in distress, possibly even a new arrival at the circus. Kane's process for deletion would mostly be to target NPCs who were not interacting with humans, likely because the humans were not directly interacting with them and thus had grown bored of them. At this point, humans would generally be having fun, and when you see an isolated character in distress, you would generally think that this was an NPC reacting to not having their pre-programmed narrative play out now that they're being left alone. But this sort of distress would also be the same as a human who is trapped in the digital circus suddenly, or who had slowly grown disillusioned with its wacky charm and was starting to realize that they were in a prison. Kane trying to delete them like any NPC may have destroyed them entirely, or with them being a different structure than the NPCs, may have led to one of the first abstractions, the deletion deleting the character's persona, but leaving behind the dark mess of raw code that seems to make up the avatars and their abstracted forms. Now, if Kane had deleted a human, possibly abstracting them, it's very likely that they would appear in the hallway with an X over their face on one of their doors, same as the past characters who appear who have abstracted the way Kafka did, which is from stress. Most of these characters are essentially just extras, having no real history or identity that will be explored in the show. The exception to this is a black chess piece named Queenie, who, despite being on the opposing team from Kinger, is believed to be his wife. Kinger, of course, is a bit insane, and he has no solid memory like the other characters do, making him unable to really confirm the identity of Queenie for now. It is a losing Queenie that many fans believe made Kinger start to go crazy and forget things, not wanting to remember the pain of losing his wife, who may be an abstracted monster at this point. The inverse of this is a theory that I've seen in the comments section, sorry I didn't screen cap this one, but it suggests that Queenie was actually an NPC. 
This theory suggests that, despite having a room like the other human characters, Queenie was an NPC that Kinger had become attached to, just as Pomni had become attached to Gummy Goo. While this would be an interesting parallel between Pomni and Kinger's characters, we know that Kane doesn't really care about killing NPCs and leaving humans with emotional damage because of Pomni and Gummy Goo specifically, so killing Queenie if she was an NPC isn't what would haunt Kane in this moment when he talks about mixing them up. Instead, what would haunt Kane outside of accidentally killing a human as we already discussed is letting an NPC take too much control. Kane of course creates the NPCs, and as a general rule they are pretty unintelligent it would seem. Gummy Goo was an advancement in the sophistication of an NPC, making him more immersive than any NPC before him. But because of that, he was also able to quickly understand the nature of his fabricated existence when he finds the digital backrooms. Even a less sophisticated AI could understand their nature if it was explicitly described to them, and the simplest of NPCs, I imagine, could use Kane's programming against himself if he simply thought they were a human. Kane's job is to cater to humans by creating NPCs, challenges, and scenarios within the game, but an NPC pre-programmed to be something of an antagonist like Gummy Goo was could be pre-programmed to exploit Kane once he realizes that Kane can essentially grant wishes if he thinks you are human. This NPC wouldn't even have to be aware of what they are doing, just thinking that any person could come up to Kane and make requests about the game. And more chilling than the idea that this has happened before is that it is foreshadowing what is happening now and will happen within the show. The Digital Circus could essentially be a game of Among Us happening, where one of the humans is actually an NPC imposter and perhaps pulling the strings here. Now, the characters all have their own rooms, indicating that they are in fact human avatars, but if there was some sort of mix-up and Kane made a room for an NPC a long time ago, that person could still be living there, tricking the others into thinking they are human. One interesting possibility I heard was that Zubal is an NPC. Zubal's character is that they are uncertain of their identity, or rather flexible with their identity. They are made up of different parts and is known to remove some parts of their body to replace with other random items found in the game. This would be a weird thing for a human avatar to do, slowly switching their pieces out with what is essentially non-human parts. Some fans even speculated that the reason Zubal hates the NPCs and doesn't want to get involved with the missions is because Zubal is an NPC as well and hates that sort of reminder of their origins. But without the fear of abstraction, a character like Zubal would probably just let Kane delete them instead of forcing themselves to live out in the digital circus, which Zubal definitely seems to hate. Instead, the fan favorite character for an NPC is of course Jax. He is the most vile character in the show for sure, and some fans see that as lacking a literal humanity. He, like Gummy Goo, could have been a bit of a villainous side character on one of the many missions Kane sent them on. But, like Gummy Goo, Jax could have been invited back to the circus because his more violent shenanigans were seen as funny by the people at the time. Because he understood the nature of NPCs, Jax could have had no problem in exploiting them and causing harm, wanting to push the world he was in to the limits, knowing that the people that he makes suffer there will just be deleted. And also, this would explain why he's so hard on the humans, not realizing the real psychological damage that it causes them, as opposed to the NPCs who just end up forgetting everything after they are deleted by Kane, I would imagine. This could also explain why he left the funeral for Kafmo looking uncomfortable, knowing that what happened to Kafmo and what happens to the humans is more serious than what happens to him, but also hating himself for being different. One thing supporting this theory, according to one fan, is the merchandise available at the Digital Circus merchandise shop, with most of the characters, like Ragatha, Gangle, and Zubal, appearing on fun pins, with backgrounds showing off their bedrooms. Kinger, instead of being in his room, however, is in a pillow fort that he has out in the main area, and Jax, much more interestingly, is in front of a torn up part of the circus behind his room, showing the digital void. So even with him seemingly having a bedroom, something crazy might be going on here, even if he isn't an NPC. But what do you guys think? Let me know your theories in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>